Gonzaga head coach, Mark Few. Mark, I'm not going to lie. It is much nicer having you here than having to deal with this guy for the entire day. I got eight hours stuck with him. Eight right hours. Next. How about right. that? Eight Imagine dealing with me for eight hours. Phil. Yes, he'll be rewarded in the end. That is the work of a saint, <laughs> my man. That is. How you doing? And he'll get, don't think, well, you know, he's going to get surly hey. and salty. Let's hope I'm catching him before he turns You're surly good. and You're salty. You're good right now. But, you know, but you know what? Because we know it's in there. You know what seeing you here <laughs> reminds me of in Vegas? No idea. Really? You really don't? I mean, I, could be many things. I, yes, it could. One of, one of the first times uh, we met, uh, it was early on, was at a blackjack, blackjack table yeah. with who? That was a good who, night. Who was, who was sitting, you know, about 10 feet away from us that night? Uh, Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson, yes. right? Yes. 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 And what people don't know is you're a very competitive blackjack player. As as are you. As am I. Yes, yes. <laughs> as are most of us. <laughs> that's, that's right. When when money's on the line on the table, I think yeah. we all get competitive. Yeah, but at, I think we had a good night that we night. Did have a good night. They Remember, were, I the told cards you, were kind to us. Bill Walker uh, yes. stood up. He got his butt kicked. Yeah. I proceeded yeah. to go in, yeah. and man, it was it was a good night. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Yeah. I don't want to digress. Yeah, all right. right. But what do you got, Rob? The, the first thing that he does is he opens it up talking about blackjack. I'm just glad he didn't start talking about pickleball. That'll right be later. That. That'll be later. Huh. Uh, uh, yeah, he's I excited. No, Listen, I'm not. <laughs> how many hours a day do you play? Not very much. Oh, lately. you're so full of crap. No, I don't no, believe I, you. I need to play more. I, once I get into the uh, rhythm of the season here where we're not traveling around with You'll be better with all the recruiting and everything going on. Uh, then, then, yeah, then, then, then I'm, I'm blessed. There's a bunch of really, really good players that uh, are around that I'm fortunate enough to play with. And uh, man, they raise my level, and uh, it's a challenge. It's a great workout. Yeah. Uh, we'll get back to that later. Okay. So for the first time in four years, you are heading into a basketball season without Drew Timmy. Um, yeah personality presence ability what, what's it been like around that program he was a joy I mean, i'm just telling you i mean I, when he walked into the basketball complex you knew he was there you could hear him coming a mile away just with whatever take he had on the particular time of the day and just i mean I, I, as i was telling robbie uh uh earlier um even on my surliest angriest days after you know we didn't rebound we weren't tough we turned the ball over you know and you wanted to make sure they felt your anger i'd find myself just laughing at because he'd say something during one of these practices or Get film sessions or something that was just so you did couldn't it, help but did laugh it take you a while to like understand that and be able to deal with it i mean you're no, you remember he came in that the year he he actually came in the COVID year, yeah. and we were rolling. We were number one seed. We might have been the number one overall seed in the whole thing. It was going to depend on whether yeah. Big Twelve didn't finish their tournament. But he his coming out party was uh, Dickie V saw him in our oh, league tournament down that's here, right. that's and I think he you know he did typical Drew. He scored like fourteen straight points in a row, and and uh, and I mean he was on a meteoric. Uh, rise but so he he kind of came in with some veteran guys that year and and uh was probably understated for drew and then he so was he you know, he wasn't that vocal because he was coming in with a veteran group uh, you know i'd say a little bit i yeah. mean I, understated for drew is right. obnoxious for everybody else right <laughs> but uh um, and outspoken Very but true. yeah for for him yeah and then obviously What's crazy is the next year was a 21 year. You know, he was only a sophomore, and everybody you, I, so good I, you that get year. the comments that like, man, I, you know, I can't believe he's still around. I mean, he was a four year guy. There was right. no red shirt. There was I no know. COVID six year crap. There's no. He wasn't 27. He, I mean, he was a four year. Not like Hummel. College Not player. like Hummel over there who was <laughs> seven years. <laughs> I mean, think about that though. Uh, so. Yeah, we miss him. We miss his swag. His swag was contagious within our program. I mean, he made, you know, the other people believe that we, we could beat whoever we were playing, you know. And uh, so how do you, who's got how the do swag you fill that void? The, the, the leadership, the presence, is it by committee? Is there anybody yeah. stepping up? I mean, it's collectively and, and it's different. It's, you know, it's different with every team, right? And, and so these guys, they'll, 
figure out their own identity and kind of form that. Obviously, when you bring in somebody like Ryan Nemhart, he's he's had so many experiences out there. You know, Anton was with Drew every step of the way of this thing. I mean, and like when I say that, I don't think you guys have any idea. Uh, they were roommates and the entire time. They were absolutely inseparable. They took every class together. I didn't know that. Yes. <laughs> and in the off season, Anton would go down and hang out with Drew in Dallas, or Drew would be up with Anton hanging out in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. They were inseparable. And uh, so, obviously, you know, Anton will be a big part of our leadership uh, this year and our success this year. How, when you got Nemhard, obviously that, that filled the huge void. I mean, yeah. he's one of the best point guards in the country. We know it. I mean, what he did last year, Creighton almost taking him to the final four. Probably the hardest thing was, as I understand, you had predicted that he was going somewhere I, else. I did. For <laughs> quite my, some time. To my alma mater. I yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. Shocking. You beat Tommy Lloyd. I mean, like, that was a battle. I want to know, are you guys still talking? No, we're you, great. Tommy's the sure? best, man. I mean, no, it wasn't a battle. Maybe a battle in your mind, but, I mean, it was no, – Tommy's the I best. I really did think he was going there. No. I think you made a you late did. late surge. I don't think you knew what you were talking about. So <laughs> that, that commonly yeah. happens. Yeah. yeah. So there's Hummel. He, look yeah. at him. He doesn't even work. He's a guy. What is he doing? No, here? I'm telling you, he's a. He's a. Yes, uh, yes. Mark, I don't I want, want to tell yeah. him that. I, I want to ask you about. I'm going to cut him off because he's going to ask about some nonsense. Going to ask about Nemhard. No, I, I, I but I want to. I want to know about Tommy because we talked with him yesterday and yeah. and he was as loose as as jovial as I think I've ever seen him in an interview. The success that he's had right away, you know, he was under staff for what, like 19, 20 years. Yeah. Um, I'm sure he had opportunities to get jobs. Yeah. Uh, maybe not yeah. the right opportunity. Yeah. That's yeah. why he's at Arizona. Are you surprised by the level of success? And when you watch him, like how do you how does it feel watching him turn Arizona back into Arizona? Uh, no, I'm not surprised at all. I mean, he was, he was, he was a big, a huge part of, you know, our success as well as Leon's walking around here. And I think we were prisoners of the present or the moment, you know, and you forget the run like Leon had as an assistant at Gonzaga and the run he's at at, at Boise State, you know, I mean, Boise State's not quite as gifted in the hierarchy as Arizona is, you know, when you walk into those situations. So, uh, but no, not, not surprised at all. I mean, Tommy's a real deal in every facet. Recruiting, he's a total bulldog in recruiting. Uh, great at evaluating, you know, good game planner, good at scouts, you know, and, and uh, uh, no, and, and it's fun to watch him. I mean, they play like us, you know, so it's fun to see him running up and down the floor. And he's, you know, had some great talent there this whole time he's developed some great talent there so uh yeah no families are still close and everything so so getting back to Nemhart, yeah uh how, how different is he from his brother obviously uh his brother had a hell of a career after transferring in you're hoping to do the same thing with with ryan but they're, they're different yeah they're different but they're also similar i mean that it's it's unbelievable whatever claude and mary did up there their feel for the game is it's it's crazy. I mean, it's at the highest level. It really, truly is. It's great to see what Andrew's been able to do at that next level. It, and it's, he's almost even better with the space at that level. You know, there's so much more space. And, you know, Ryan's feel, the way he plays with pace, I mean, the way he makes – I mean, you, you guys will see this year just even the impact he has on Nolan Hickman. Um, I mean, Nolan's playing the best he's ever played uh, right now. And – because he's running alongside Ryan, you know. And Makes life easier for He everybody. really does. And I think it's actually freed up Nolan to probably play more natural position and not have to worry about setting up the offense or breaking a press and stuff like that. And, uh, uh, but, yeah, I mean, they're totally different bodies, shapes, and sizes. But, man, that feel for the game and passing, it's the same. same. Yeah. yeah. Graham BK, when he was at Wyoming, the, the last year before he got hurt was a basically a twenty and ten guy. Yeah. Right. Then he has to sit out the season. It was uh was it a shoulder? Foot. 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 It was the yeah. foot. Yeah. Um, what have you seen out of him? Is he back healthy? Is he's a great low post score. I know you love those low post yes. scores. Yeah. I mean we we we've been really, really, really conservative with bringing him along. So we we practice him hard. 
in the summer and then kind of tailed it off. And now we're in the process of kind of amping it back up uh, for this season. So I think our expectation is that he is going to be. I think he's good enough to be a 2010 type guy uh, uh, for us also. And as you know, we're going to throw the ball in there and, and, and give him those touches and those opportunities. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, it, it, it'll be interesting again, just kind of integrating in into the whole thing, especially, you know, like in our situation, we got to be good. We don't have the luxury of like kind of no, easing you, into you this thing. Good, we we got to be good, good all year. Right you know, we, we don't get to just, you know, kind of, tinker and toy and do stuff in the preseason and then get ready for our league season. we got to be good early November to is hopefully he, April 1st. Do you 1st. think he'll play the season opener? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, do. yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's yeah, what yeah, you yeah. That's the plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's going to be a big key. Uh, obviously, uh, Ryan will be a big key. Anton's going to be a big key. You know, we've got some good play out of Braden Huff so far. Uh he redshirted last year, but I think he's, he's one of those guys that we've had. He's not Drew Timmy at all, but he's got he's got a ball that goes in. You know, he just he can kind of shoot it and throw it up there any way he wants and just goes in. Um, so we'll try to play off that. Big 12, yep. Gonzaga. I mean, you hear it all the time now. Like every league, hear it all the time. right? Every so league, like, Big yeah. East, Big 12. Yeah. I mean, who knows? You could end up in the Summit League. I don't know. But – Again, Here we are at WCC Media Day, so I we're. Know, I mean, but, it's but about the ask, WCC. But you still got to ask. Yeah, I mean, but it's just it's just the same stuff. Yeah. So until there's something to report yep. on, you report on it. And, and fortunately, all of us have graduated from scooping. Yeah. <laughs> and are moving on to like, okay, man, we got games starting in a couple of weeks here, and worry and about that. More seasons, yep. and and yeah. So uh, yeah, that's kind of does it. it phase you at all anymore not really no. you know i think you just when you've I mean, done not it, much phases you anyway when you get to this point you yeah. just kind of try to major in the major and minor in the minors you know and you know like okay it's time to we gotta get these guys ready you know and finish up recruiting and then get these guys ready and just i tend to simplify my life as much as I can, you know? Yes, you do. <laughs> no doubt about that. <laughs> they asked me in there, what three things would you change? And I said, I wish I'd be a, be a better listener. And I, and uh, what else? Uh, I wish I'd be more patient. And I said, and the third one, I, I, I want to say, I wish I'd be more organized, but I really don't wish I'd be more organized. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, I figured that would just cause more stress. Right, so I'm just, exactly. I'm, I'm good. I don't, How old are you now? What are you? I, I identify as a 42-year-old, I say. Yeah, that's the kind of guys I play pickleball with, I mountain bike with, you know, still trying like crazy to wake surf with my kids. And, uh, yeah, so that's who I got to be. So, you know, I, I think with everything changing over the last couple of years, I had a long conversation with Tony Bennett at yeah. the Peach Jam about yeah. just kind of how everything has changed and how, you know, guys that have been in it for a while like Tony, like you, uh, Tony's a little bit younger than you, yeah. by the way, in case you didn't he's, know. He's got hair he's got the color of hair. yours, though. He's got great <laughs> He's got better hair than me. Um, but, like, how it, everything that's that's changing now could – we've seen it. I mean, we've seen it with, with Roy Williams, right? We've seen it with Jay yeah. Wright. Yeah. Guys going out a little bit quicker than, than they probably would otherwise. How much do you think about that? Or are you just on a year-to-year a -year deal right now? kind of and evaluate every year yeah, i mean i mean first of all i think you gotta i mean we we maybe have speculated that that's why they went out or maybe that they just they were always thinking that way or feeling that way or whatever i mean it's so, it's so unique to each person what they want to do with their life um no listen these are really weird complicated times for what we're used to but if you do think back to what what Roy went through, what Coach K went through, what Bayheim went I mean, all the changes that they saw during their careers. And I just always, I always just uh, um, am in awe of how they just kind of flawlessly adapted. I yeah. mean, they just. These are I big mean, ones, though, all at once. They are, but I think at the time they probably felt theirs were big yeah, ones, true. too, you know. And, and, uh, and But they are big, and they're, you know, they're weird it's still weird to me talking about nil and the recruiting process it just doesn't feel right in my stomach but 
I also know that if we can ever get it properly, you know, organized and adjudicated or whatever you want to say that it's a good thing, but you know, it's, it's pretty crazy right, right now, you know, so. Last one I got for you and then we got to let you go. Yeah. Um, Jeff always says this, you, you've managed to find a work life balance that is better than just about anybody in an industry where there is no work life balance for most college basketball coaches. Just what is the advice that you would give to people young coaches, young people that are trying to go into different industries where you got to work 80, 90 hour weeks. How, how did you manage that? How did you develop it? What advice would you give to young people? I mean, I think it, I think that's just who I am, you know? So if that's not how they're wired, you know, um, like, I, like I kind of said earlier, I think it's, it's probably a weakness if it was in another industry or maybe probably would be a weakness if it was at another school or program or whatever. But for me, like, I just try to boil this thing down to, to, to do the big things. And then I just don't sweat the little things. You know, I don't have one ounce of anal retentiveness in me uh, <laughs> whatsoever. Um, and so I just focus on that. I focus on the players. I focus on a relationship. I fo look, you got to get, you got to recruit. He and I have had this talk over the years. He used to chide me. I, I, I don't need to get at the gym 20 minutes before and be the first one at the gym. I'm going to go watch Rob Dowster, and if he's a good player, I'm going to say, hey, you're a good player. I don't feel like I have to come watch you 25 times. I, I, you know, that might, if, that, if that hurts me in recruiting, you're not going to work at Gonzaga anyway. Um, so I feel like just I think if you just you know, are yourself and don't try to live up to maybe this standard as sleeping in the office and all that. And then I really think, I know this for a fact, man, the number one job in my life is to be a great husband, to be a great father, you know, and just to be a great, uh, you know, coach to these players. And, and that, that's it, man. And it's all this other stuff is that's not, I don't feel like that's a big part of who I need to be.